We we have a a, a human crisis. Uh, I'm saying it's a human because I think it's important to give it a face. Uh, I'm saying it is a crisis because that's what it is. Here you have a governance drought, a worsening climate crisis uh, since 2015 when we overshot one degree Celsius with its climate extremes is meeting a failing state in South Africa. That's what's happening here. And we understand that in our country water has become the basis of struggle. People are, are struggling to access water. We bear the brunt of the crisis that we did not commit. If you live in a township where you, when you go to taps, taps are running dry, there's no water. You know Mississippi is burning. If you live in a township where politicians are, are not accountable, then you know Mississippi is, is burning. You know there's no freedom. You know there's no democracy. This is one stark fact that highlights water inequality uh, in our society. In the everyday uh, life of South Africans, this means that you have water distribution in informal settlements, uh, in poorer communities, etc., that is not able to, to meet their needs. I think it's common cause that we have an infrastructure challenge, you know, be aging infrastructure or um, challenges with maintenance and all of that that may affect um, or be exacerbated by the, by, the, by, the, by the current climate change impact that we're facing. The state hasn't been able to kind of design a strategy that is capable of uh, managing existing water infrastructure uh, planning in um, the future of water resources. So there's been a, a strategic failure in terms of governance and practice in the state. I mean, currently there's a process of, of uh, re-looking at the equitable share in terms of how, you know, how much of the financial resources and budgets that are being made available um, to, to the local sphere of government. And in my view, the biggest chunk of the fiscal should be going there to be able to support and to make sure that there is proper implementation and there's proper compliance and monitoring and evaluation and then coming back and changing where the systems are failing, where the things are not working. The other failure around uh, our water regime in South Africa has been corruption. And this has featured at a whole host of levels uh, in the country. Uh, in local government, where you're seeing a lot of uh, water systems failure, um, and as a result, we are we have we are behind the curve, uh, both the climate crisis curve, but also the national needs of our society, uh, because of that kind of corruption, uh, cronyism, uh, and kind of incompetence in the state. In this municipality, we have been experiencing the crisis of water. Council took a decision to build an alternative dam and water plant. So when they started the project, it was estimated to be 50 million. This is now the seventh year. The project is standing at 237 million. They estimated that they will complete the project by 2024. By then, it will be standing at half a billion from 50 million. I have visited Makanda as part of my research and I found various things that were quite striking and shocking. Uh, I found that um, the actual supply of water to households is not properly documented and recorded. So you don't know what literage is being consumed in any household. Here in Makanda, you've got a problem of sewer that is affecting the water, the sewer everywhere that is running in our homes on the streets. So we are at the risk of drinking water with E. coli. 
What you're seeing in Makanda is because of failing political leadership, you're actually putting, pe putting people uh, not just into desperation, but you're putting them into a struggle to survive. The Department of Water has not taken the responsibility of what is happening at James Clean Hands. The provincial government is supposed to be playing an oversight role. They are aware that we have been subjected to, to a water that is contaminated, but there are no consequences. The Auditor General used the words that our municipalities are the den of thieves. A lot of money came from the central government to sort out uh, various problems. Money came, but that money was basically captured and, and corruptly taken away. I think the grand heist is a very accurate way of capturing the theft, the grand scale of theft over a decade of public resources that were meant to solve the problem and meet the needs of the people. Uh, corruption could be a very theoretical uh, word or something that we, we can think of in, uh, very hypothetically. But in reality, it means starving. It, it, it takes away the dignity. It, it condemns us. It condemns our lives uh, to that of a poverty uh, with, with no hope, with no solution. Access to clean water is a constitutional right of every uh, citizen in this country. Um, and I think it's important for us to witness, to, to, to actually, for us to realize the, the vulnerability of that access to clean water as a result of many factors. We are saying that we've got to have a deep, just transition that is driven from below. Uh, we, cannot, we cannot allow the the climate crisis and its multiple challenges to be, if you like, in the hands of the state. We need, we need more than just ourselves. We need um, all spheres of government. We need private sector. We need civil society. We need international organizations that are skilled in this sort of things uh, to be able to take hands. If we do not get that politics right uh, as climate justice activists, uh, as citizens, because this problem has to be owned by everyone, activists are not going to solve this problem, uh, we are going to constantly be, tra be trapped in this nightmare and it's only going to get worse. So there's a need for agency, there's a need for uh, all living in South Africa to step up and to ensure we democratize all these problems. If we do not do that, and I've said this before, Water is going to tear this country apart. It is going to be the source of great conflict uh, in South Africa. We've got to turn another leaf. I think the politics of humanity are quite important and fundamental politics, the politics of hope, the politics of love that we are able to turn another leaf, that we are able to find our mission, we are able to fulfill our mission on earth.